Whenever you are working with small functions in Python, and you do that a lot by the way, Lambda Expressions allows you to do the most with the least amount of code. And in this tutorial, you will see all the basics you need to know about Lambda Expressions, including when and how to use them. By the way, if you don't have any ready to go IDE or Python running environment, and if you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can simply search for Google Colab and click on the first thing that comes up, which is welcome to collaboratory. And inside that, you can just click on the Niv notebook and follow along. And you can do this whether you are on your phone, laptop or desktop. I also have a full tutorial on Google Colab and I will make sure to put a link to it somewhere here. With that said, let's dive into the video. So Lambda expressions are essentially nameless functions or anonymous functions. And we usually want to use them when we have a small function, small single line expression that we are only planning to use once. And in this tutorial, we will see multiple ways on how to create and use Lambda expressions. And if any of the things I said sound confusing, do not worry for now, we will go all over them step by step throughout this tutorial. With that said, let's start with our first example. So in order to create a Lambda expression, first thing we do is to write the keyword Lambda and we give a space and write the parameters. And just like in regular functions, we can have a single parameter, multiple parameters or no parameters at all. And we will also see a different example to that. But in this example, we will use a Lambda expression that accepts two arguments and basically multiplies that. So once we write the parameters, we will put a colon and then we will write the expression we want to return. And as long as we can write a single line expression, in this case multiplying two numbers, the result of this expression will be calculated and returned, just like in regular functions. But since we have a single line expression, there is no need for an explicit return keyword since the result is automatically returned in the Lambda expression. Let's see some more examples so it's more clear. Now that we have these Lambda expressions, one thing you may be wondering is that, okay, how can we actually use these expressions? And there are actually two ways. So first way is to actually give them a name and call them just like regular functions in Python. And the second way where they are more actually powerful is to use them in something called higher order functions, such as map and filter. And before coming to that, let's start with naming them and calling them like regular functions. Now that we named all of them, let's call them. And we obviously have to print the results so we can actually see them. And as you can see, all the expressions are calculated and we execute them just like regular functions in Python. So the strings of hello and world are concatenated. 10 is multiplied by 2 and is doubled. And we multiply 10, 20 and you basically get the point. And also, just like in regular functions, we can also give them default parameters or default arguments. And let's also see an example to that as well. In this case, we just passed a value for x, which was 10, and it got multiplied by y, which was also 10, and we got the result 100. But if you want, we also have the option to give it a custom value, such as 20 in this case, and got the value re and got the result of 200. So actually the left side of the colon, which is where we get the arguments, is pretty identical to regular functions. But the major difference is that since we have only one expression on the right side on a single line, we can write those functions as lambda functions, which make it much more concise. And we'll especially see that benefits with the second way of using Lambda expressions, which is in higher order functions, such as map and filter functions. If you're not confident using map or filter, do not worry, we will start with simple examples, then we will incorporate Lambda into them as well. So without further ado, let's start with the map. So this is one of the simplest ways we can use a map function. A map function essentially takes an iterable such as this numbers list here and it also accepts a function such as the double function here and applies the transformation given in the function to each of the numbers, each of the elements in this list. And if we run this cell we can see the results as well. And as you can see each and every element in the list is doubled with the given function. 
And if you had no idea about lambda expressions, we could write it in this way. But now we know that we can use lambda expressions here. In that case, we wouldn't need to define a separate function, give it a name and return it all in a separate line. But we could actually write it inside the map function as well. And let's also see that. And as you can see, we get the same exact results in the variable called double two. And rather than defining a separate function, we pass in a function as a lambda expression. And the reason map and filter are called higher order functions is basically because these are functions that either accept a function or return a function as a result. And in this case, we are passing in a function as a lambda expression here. And the reason we write list here is that when we say map, when we write map, it actually gives us something called a map object. And to be able to use it in a way that we want, we turn it into a list. So we get a nice list we can print. Now that we've seen the map example, let's also see another highly common use case for Lambda, which is the filter. And in this example, we are using the filter function and we are only keeping the even numbers here. So we could call this even as well. And in this example, we are getting the same numbers array, the one with one, two, three, four, five, and applying this filter to it. And we define the rules of filtering in this function. And in this case, we are using a lambda expression and we are basically saying it should be even divisible by two. And if you want to get the odd numbers, we would make this one and we would get the odd numbers from the original list. And even though the examples we use are pretty small and the file size we use is pretty small, we can still see the power of Lambda functions as we can be really dynamic and concise with our code. And in this case, it will be actually a pretty good idea to name these variable names explicitly, such as odds or even numbers, depending on what we filter, depending on the results of the numbers. Also note that all, if all we want to do is to modify some lists, there is something called list comprehension in Python. And it's also a pretty powerful feature of Python, which many people love and use. And in the next tutorial, you will see all the basics you need to know about list comprehensions. With that said, hope you got some value out of this video. If you want more stories like this, don't forget to hit the like button and smash the subscribe button. With that said, I will see you in the next video.